are in my kitchen on a really sunny day and I'm just going to talk you through what I have on my windowsill. Um, well, as you can see, I have a lot of uh, orchids down below in the clay pots and uh, above I have some Nepenthes. And I use the, this windowsill here in the kitchen as my kind of display area. So when one of my light-loving orchids is in flower, I bring it down here to display it. And um, there are uh, various ones that I've talked about in uh, other videos, so I'm not going to bore you by going over them again. Um, so for the moment, I'll just mention this little epicatleia here that I haven't mentioned before. Now, it's very sunny and difficult to show things, but I'm going to just move around here to the other side. And um, can you see the um, epicatleia there? It's the pink one, I'll just bring you in close. And um, it's a cross uh, between catleias which are the ones I normally love to grow, and epidendrums, which are these tall guys, um, like this one over here. And uh, it really is a cross between the two in its whole habit. But the epidendrum is very tall, and so is this epicatleia. It's not quite opened yet. I'm not sure which hybrid this is because it came unlabeled, but um, I'm going with the uh, cultivar Voila because I think it's just a great name. Um, anyway, it's very tall and the stem is sturdy and strong and doesn't need to be staked at all. But the reason why I've staked this is that um, if you don't stake it, then the plant bends towards the light and it can develop some very um, curly stems as a result. I'm going to take a few minutes now to talk about my Nepenthes or tropical pitcher plants. And I want to start off by saying that I'm in no way an expert on these. So um, I'm just going to give you a bit about my experience with them. And the thing to note with Nepenthes is that there are two types. There are the highland ones, which are generally considered to be the more difficult. Now these need warm temperatures during the day and cool temperatures at night. And then there are the low ones, the, the lowland ones. That means, you know, they were found not on the top of mountains. And um, they kind of need a consistently high temperature and high humidity. But generally speaking, if you've got a Nepenthes that's a hybrid across between the two, then that's good. I mean, they're um, easier to deal with. And I think they're generally referred to as intermediate. Anyway, this one here I want to show you is a gorgeous one. Uh, this is a Nepenthes Miranda. And uh, you can see the picture there. Now, during the summer, these pictures get to be much bigger. This is a, a very small one. But um, uh, Miranda is a cross between Northiana, which is a lowland nep, and Maxima, which is a highland one. So it's, um, you know, for the look of it, I mean, it's a really fantastic looking plant. Uh, um, it's surprising that it's so easy to deal with, really. And um, the other one, this one in the middle here, I don't know what that is. I bought it at a garden centre in Germany a few years ago. And um, it's a lovely looking plant and it pitches well, better during the summer really. But um, there they are, there's a couple of pictures there. Should we go in and have a look? There is one at the side there. See these little growths here, like this. These are kind of tendrils that come out of the tips of the leaves and that'll turn into a pitcher if the plant has sufficient humidity. So the other one I grow is a cultivar called Rebecca Sopper. Sopper? 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 Let's see, can we see that? And um, this one 
would appear to be a cross between two highland neps, um, ventricosa and gracilima, I think. But it has lovely pictures, lovely dark pictures. There are several forming at the moment now, but none that I can really show you um, in full growth. But see how they start. The plant produces this thing at the tip of the leaf and it, it, it makes a kind of uh, empty pitcher. And then when it's ready to open, the lid opens and digestive juices are in the inside. Because these are carnivorous plants after all and um, they will catch insects and digest them. If we look over here at the uh, Miranda, with the light shining through it, you should be able to see the liquid that's actually in the base of the pitcher. That's a bit tricky, a bit difficult to show now at the moment. But there, there is liquid in there. Anyway, those are the uh, pitcher plants that I grow. But I really would like to try something else a bit different. And may experiment a bit more soon. Thanks for watching.